So far, Madam President, in the few years that DACA has been in effect, over 740,000 young people have signed up. They came forward, paid their fee, went through the background check, they were approved, and now they're either working or going to school. DACA has allowed these dreamers to make contributions to America, which are valuable to all of us. They're soldiers, nurses, teachers, engineers, police officers, and they're aspiring to the highest levels of education in our country. These DACA recipients are making important contributions to our economy. A new study by the Center for American Progress finds that ending DACA would cost the United States $433.4 billion in gross domestic product over the next 10 years. These are not just bright young students, they're great workers. They'll be great professionals. They will help people and they'll make America stronger. DACA is based on the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act is bipartisan legislation that I first introduced 15 years ago. You know, if you're gonna serve in the Senate, you have to be patient. I didn't dream I'd be standing here 15 years later, still asking for the Senate to approve the DREAM Act. But in the meantime, what President Obama did was to say, we'll protect these young people while Congress debates the future of immigration reform, but we'll make sure that they can stay in this country without fear of deportation. If the DREAM Act is enacted into law, and it's passed the Senate, incidentally, several years ago, if it's enacted into law, it'll give these undocumented students a chance to earn their way to legal status and citizenship. DACA is clearly legal. Like every president before him, President Obama has the authority to set immigration policy for his administration. DACA is also smart and realistic. It's the way to enforce our immigration laws the right way, to make sure that these young people who've done nothing wrong and have no criminal problems and have paid their fee and registered with the government are allowed to stay without fear of a knock on the door. The Department of Homeland Security only has enough funding to deport a small fraction of the undocumented immigrants in our country each year. So the President, President Obama, has said he wants to focus those resources on those who should not be in the United States, those who could do us harm. That's just common sense. At the same time, the President said we shouldn't waste our resources on deporting young immigrant students who grew up in, in the United States and are making contributions to our future. During the campaign, President-elect Trump pledged to rescind and end DACA. I believe that after his administration studies the issue, there's a chance he will reconsider when he comes to know these, quote, terrific people. Now, I've come to the floor of the Senate now for over 10 years telling the stories of these dreamers. There was a time when they were afraid to come out publicly and tell America who they were. They'd been warned by their parents since they were little kids, be careful. If you talk to the wrong person, if you do the wrong thing, if the police knock on the door, you may be deported along with the rest of your family. So be careful. Well, as kids will, these young people across America have decided they're not gonna hide who they are. They wanna tell America their story and I've tried to help them. When they send us their biographies, along with a photograph, I've come to the floor on about 100 different occasions to tell the stories of these dreamers. Each one, in my estimation, is more amazing than the next, and today is no exception. This is Ray Pineda. In 1990, when Ray was two years old, his family came to the United States from Mexico. Ray grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. He worked hard, honor roll student in high school. He became the first member of his family to attend college. In 2010, he graduated with a major in philosophy from Southern Catholic College in Dawsonville, Georgia. Ray is a devout Catholic, and he decided to attend Mundelein Seminary in my home state of Illinois. Ray felt that God was calling him to be a priest, but his spiritual path was blocked. Ray is undocumented. Ray is a dreamer. Then in 2012, everything changed. President Obama signed the executive order establishing DACA. In March of 2013, Ray was approved, filed his fee, 
went through the background check, did everything he was asked to do. He received his DACA status, and he knew that at least for two years he would not be subject to deportation. That allowed him to become a deacon in the Catholic Church two months later in May of 2013. In 2014, Ray entered the priesthood after he graduated magna cum laude from Mundelein Seminary in Illinois. He has a master's in divinity. Today, Father Ray Pineda is a priest at the Cathedral of Christ the King in Atlanta, Georgia. He wrote me a letter, and here's what he said about DACA. Like many dreamers, the United States is really the only country I know. DACA was an answer to many years of prayer. Without DACA, I would not have been able to serve as a priest in my community. I believe my faith in God has brought me to this point in my life. But my faith in America's promise has pushed me to keep fighting for peace, justice, and opportunity in this great country I proudly call home. If DACA is eliminated and that threat has been made, Father Ray Pineda will lose his legal status and be subject to deportation, being sent back to a country that he hasn't lived in since he was two years old. That would be a tragedy for Father Ray Pineda and his congregation and the hundreds of people who count on him as their priest. Consider this. There's a chronic shortage of Catholic priests in America. Since 1975, the number of priests has declined by 33%. The number of American Catholics has grown by 43%. Hundreds of parishes have been forced to close or consolidate. Nearly one out of five parishes, Catholic parishes in America, have no priest. This shortage of priests is not limited to the Catholic Church. The problem is so serious that Congress has established a religious worker visa to allow people from overseas to come in on a visa and serve as priests in communities. It's happening all across my state of Illinois, and I'll bet it's happening in Iowa. You go to parishes in rural areas, and there'll be priests from all over the world. I recently met one in Rome who was in southern Illinois at Pinckneyville, and he was from Nigeria. At a time when the United States is actively importing ministers and priests from foreign countries, why do we want to deport Father Ray Pineda? This makes no sense. Listen to what Father Ray told me about his role as a priest and also as an undocumented immigrant. I believe my entire journey has prepared me to be compassionate with the sufferings of the many people I encounter. I look at my ministry as a calling to build bridges between people from all walks of life. Diversity sometimes brings challenges between people. I want to help to heal those differences. After the most divisive election in recent memory, I believe that Father Ray Pineda and other dreamers just like him have an important role to play in healing the differences that divide America. I am hoping that President-elect Trump will see this and will continue the DACA program. But let me be clear, if there is an attempt to shut down DACA, I will do everything in my power as a United States Senator to protect the dreamers who have stepped forward and contributed their talents to our great country. Madam President, many of those dreamers and their parents spoke to me that day at Navy Pier and ever since. They said, Senator, are you sure, are you sure that we should sign up with this government? We spent a lifetime trying to stay out of trouble, stay out of the view of people, not cause any problems, go about our business, raise our families, do our jobs, go to our church. If our children register with this government, will that come back at a future time and be used against them? Well, I said, Madam President, at the time, and I believe now, that America would stand behind these young people. We will not allow them to be deported after what they've been through. We will not say to them, by complying with the requirements of our government, you've penalized yourself in the future. We want to give them a chance. Now is the time for America, this nation of immigrants, to heal the wounds that divided us during this election. Let's start with the dreamers. Let's start with DACA. Let's start with the young people that will make America better and stronger in years to come. They are the best in this country. Let's make them the best of America's future. I hope and pray 
that the President-elect's words and actions in the coming weeks and months will in fact bring us together.